Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Cyberlab and today will be another video about the Proxmox. This video will be number 5, where I will show how you can install your container in your Proxmox. But before you watch this video, let's get some information. This one is video number 5. So if you didn't watch video number 1, 2, 3, 4, you maybe miss some information. If you don't have Proxmox installed, or you don't have all the setups or configurations that we already did in the previous video, this video will be a little bit uh, difficult for you to follow and that you not understand how arrive in this stage or what we need to do to have that specific thing. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and let's see how we can do it. So let's start with the basics. I already have Proxmox installed. These Proxmox have one node called CyberLab. Remember, this CyberLab, if I come in summaries, have four cores and 80 gigabytes of run memory. So let's start from the basics. I have Proxmox installed in a physical computer, and you're gonna ask why you don't have installed in a virtual machine? Because don't work well. I tried before to install in a virtual machine, run it, but it didn't work as I expect, so I decided to have an old computer run Proxmox in order to show these videos. And this node have a Intel i5-3570K, where I have four cores, and I have 80 GB of RAM. This machine is exactly the same that I showed in the previous video, where I have uh, some virtual machines. This virtual machine is a template of virtual machine that have Ubuntu, and other two virtual machines that's not work at the moment. Other thing, I have local hard drive where it's shared information with my US and I'm using only five gigabytes from my total of 38 gigabytes. This LVM, it's shared the same hard drive that has installed my US. So I suggest you to don't use so much this hard drive to use your virtual machine's disk or your container volume because this hard drive share exactly the same as my US and I don't have parity for it. So if this hard drive stops to work, all my data stops to work and it's not interesting. So I suggest you to have a ZFS, principally if you're using for production. If you use only for try, it's totally fine, but as production is better. This system, I'm using 109 gigabytes of uh, my capacity. And you're gonna ask what it's using this capacity. It's simple. If I come here, my virtual machine's disk, I have uh, one volume that it's using by the template and others two that's using by two virtual machines. And if I keep and create more virtual machines, they will keep using this capacity. Other thing, I come here, my container volume, and inside this container volume, I don't have anything. But once that you create our container, we're gonna see some volume here. So now we can start to install our container. But before we install, we need to know which image or which model that we're gonna use to install. So if I come here in my local, I can choose an option container templates and I can choose upload where I can have my container, my computer can upload in this system. I can download for URL where I can have the website from this container and download and they will check it for me. But the easiest one, it comes directly in template. So here in the template, Proxmox right, I have a really big list of templates that you can only install it and run it quite well. So we're gonna look for Ubuntu. If I can Ubuntu and put enter, have different versions. The version that I'm gonna install is the version 20.04 because it's exactly the same that I'm using for my virtual machine. So it's easy and it's exactly the same. I come here and put download. So now it will take a few seconds until they finish the load. According here, they take 3.8 seconds, that's great, and task is okay. So once that I close it, my template should appear here. So now I can start to create my container. To create my container, it's really easy. I will put create container. They appear this information. So I have only one node. I cannot choose others. This reason that I will keep Cyber Lab. Here, my container ID, I can define a unique number for this container. In my case, I like to keep between 100 and 200 all my virtual machines, between 200 and 300 all my containers, and between 300 to 400 all my templates. So in this case, a container, so we'll put 201, 
host name I need to define a name so I'll put uh, Ubuntu because it's exactly the same name as my other volume so now I can create my password so I'll put my password and repeat my password and now I can create my SSH public key how it's work uh, I will not show this video but you can use put to generate a public key and you can load this public key in order that when your system hey start you use this public key and that you can access your container otherwise you'll not be able to access it this public key or this uh, ssh uh, public key it's only good if you feel that uh, someone can try to hack it for precaution or security in my case i don't need to do it because after we delete this container so I'll come here but remember if you have questions in this point I can uh, create another video so leave your comment and that I can look more about uh, how to create this SSH and may post another video so now I come here in template and I can select the template remember that already did the download yes this time that we're gonna select it and choose in my case because I have only one template I cannot choose others but if I have more please choose the correct one so I'll put here choose and I come here in my disk now I can select the storage I can have the same one as my OS or I can have my ZFS that's more safe so we'll get my ZFS and define how big it's my hard drive in my case 8 gigabytes will be okay but I suggest you to put higher as your needs I'm using only for trial so we'll leave as a 8 gigabytes now I come here in my CPU I can define how many cores that I'm gonna use I can put up to four cores because it's only four cores that I have in my system but uh, I will leave only one because if I put all the capacity in only one container or one virtual machine then the rest will be lack of capacity and maybe you can have problems with your Proxmox so now I can come in memory I can define how much of memory that I want normally I would suggest you to use at least one gigabyte of run memory but uh, I potentially could use less because it's only a trial so now I can come here in my network my network where I'm going to configure how to access this container so here in my name I can define any name this internet zero it's totally fine the bridge it's only one so I can leave this one and now I will select DHCP and DHCP for my IPv4 and my IPv6 this will mean that it will not be static my IP and that uh, they will look the IP that's given by my holder if I have a reason to be a static I suggest to put a static but in my case not another thing why I leave both as a DHCP because I want that both has been configured properly don't worry I know that you're not using so often your IPv6 but you have the option here if you need so now I come here in my DNS and only need to configure my DNS if I have a reason in my case I don't have so I will leave the standard but if you want to use Cloudflare, Google and everything you can put your domain in your server and that will work quite well in confirmation we can check all the configuration and if everything is okay so before I put here finish we're gonna check how fast it is to create a container and to have everything configured so once that I click here in a couple of seconds my container will be ready they extract it my container right up here here I can close it come here my container summaries and that's it they already finished great now I can come here and put play but before I put play I will go for some basic informations as well I have only one CPU I have one gigabyte of run memory and one gigabyte of swap as well I have uh, eight gigabyte of uh, capacity that I'm using if I come here in resource I can modify my resource to make it bigger or smaller but in my case I will come here and put play in the play I will come here my console and in a few seconds they will already appear the option for me to do the login so here I can do the login now one thing I didn't configure my user so I will need to login as a root but the password will be the same that you configured before so it will be root and the password test123 and now I have my machine working I can check the IP address and put IP A and now I know that IP address for this machine is 192.168.1.150 and then I will say you can access your putty and you're gonna try to access your putty and not work why? 
because you didn't create a new user to be able to access it. So to create a new user is really, really simple. We're gonna type add user and the name CyberLab and they will ask what's the password. So put test123 and try to repeat it correctly. And now I can set up my name and all the information. Do not use anything at this stage. So I can only go there and leave empty, say that yes, enter. And now I have my user create. But this user don't have all the permission. In order to be able to access the system and have some root permissions, I'll need to use user mod uh, slash A and G sudo cyberlab and put enter. And before you ask, Alan, you never use any sudo in this command because I am already looking as a sudo as a root, so it will not make any difference. Now we can open our put and try to access it. So to access our put, it's simple. We're gonna access with the same IP address 192.168.1.150. And now I can come here, put yes, and looking as a cyber lab and put my password. And now we're ready to access it. So if I put IPA, I have exactly the same IP address as my machine. Now I can close it only for show something else. And I come here in my summaries. So in my summaries, I can see how much I'm using. So I have uh, eight gigabytes and I'm using 400 megabytes. Also, I'm using around 33, 30 megabytes of run. So almost nothing. But what's comparing with a virtual machine? If I come here, my virtual machine and start this virtual machine, they will start, will take a little bit more time and straight away, they already go for 100 or 200 megabytes. So now I can come here in console and see what is going on. This is taking time until they appear this page. And here in this page, I can make the login, Sauber Lab. So here, once that I log in with my user, I can come in summaries and I'm already using 375 megabytes of uh, run memory. Compare for only 30 megabytes of run memory. Other thing, how much I'm using for my hard drive. So I can come here back in the console. I have already looking it and it's working and I will put df slash h so i'm using 4.7 gigabytes of capacity from my system if i come here and put uh, console to be fair i will run exactly the same step and now i'm using uh, only 401 megabytes check the difference one i'm using 4.7 gigabytes and the other and the other 401 megabytes so almost nothing compared for both so a container is lightweight it's uh, faster to install faster to start, run smoothly and use less capacity. But I don't think that a container is always better to run. I have some situation that the container will not work or some situation that a virtual machine will not work in the way that you expect. So I hope that you like this video. In this video, I try to explain a little bit more about containers and virtual machines. But don't worry if you didn't understand and you're not sure which option that you should install in depend of the case that you're gonna use. In the next videos, I want to explain a little bit more about it and which case that you're gonna use a, a container and in which case that you're gonna use a virtual machine. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for this channel and see you next time. Bye.